All right. I think we're going. So let's get it going. How are you doing today? Hopefully wonderful yet again. Um, today, really like no idea. Like after having one yesterday where it was like very much, I know what I want to talk about. It's kind of weird now. It doesn't have to be scripted still. None of these have been scripted. It's just like knowing what I was going to talk about is probably was was kind of a nice thing I can kind of prep in my mind what I'm going to say as opposed to kind of just all of it off the cuff so I don't know just just right before this I was like we'll grab another one of these guys these guys off the shelf without knocking them down very carefully all right (coughs) excuse me so let's start let's go over this one this time people recognize this 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 brilliant dude put that in front of my face maybe it'll focus on donkey kong yay focusing on donkey kong okay cool i'll take that away so donkey kong this is kind of a weird one to grab because i i didn't actually play a lot of um donkey kong games um when i was a like a a wee a wee lad um i remember people talking about the donkey kong country games like they were like super duper amazing i had played the original arcade donkey kong prior to just a a lot of things um can't remember when i would have played that initially um but I was like, oh yeah, sure, whatever. It's platforming. It's more of a Mario game than it was a Donkey Kong game, naturally. Um, just named after the thing you're trying to trying to catch and save the princess from, <clears throat> or save Pauline from. I'm not sure she was a princess in those games. Um, but it wasn't until I think the N64. As with kind of most most things, a lot of a lot of the games I was playing didn't really start until. The N64. Prior to the N64, I was playing a lot of um, Game Boy games. Um, I did have a Nintendo or an NES, but I didn't have a Super Nintendo. I didn't have a Super Nintendo until high school. Um, what else did I have? Yeah, just yeah, it was just Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Color, then all the other Game Boys up through up through where we're at now with with 3DS and Switch. I guess you can arguably call that a handheld. Um, but yeah, I didn't have, I didn't have a Super Nintendo, so I kind of missed that generation. Um, instead I had a Sega Genesis, which was like around that, but all the different, all different franchise stuff. That's when I was kind of introduced to Sonic and had like really, really, really enjoyed those, those early Sonic games. Um, I digress. Not what we're talking about here. Donkey Kong. The first real Donkey Kong game that I had gotten and tried to like play through to any degree was Donkey Kong 64, which is hilarious. I don't know if it's because like after I had played it, the first time I had heard people talking about it again was probably in the speedrunning community. And like, it's just notoriously a not great speed game. Um, so like people like to kind of give it grief but i don't know i kind of have a soft spot for that game and i don't know if it's just because it's like the first donkey kong game that i really kind of like could really had that kind of access to like i didn't since since all the donkey kong country games came out basically for for super nintendo i didn't really get a chance to play it so that was like my first chance at playing a donkey kong game so it kind of resonated with me as my first one um, but there were just a number of like just all the collectible stuff in that game, which is just ridiculous. It's a ton of stuff to collect. Um, it was really just kind of fun. I don't know. The, the movement in the game was quirky and sometimes difficult and the camera angles weren't always that great. Uh, definitely in the multiplayer, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, but like really liked all the collectathon stuff. I really liked and maybe it was just kind of a game design thing that I that I really enjoyed was being able to switch characters. Like you didn't just have one main character, unlike 
other games where it's like you start a level and you're going to play as that character throughout that entire level. But in Donkey Kong 64, after you save the other Kongs, um, you can uh, switch between them at any Kong barrel, uh, like a, I don't want to call it like a team barrel or anything, but it has all their faces on it. You jump in there, you can change to any one of the other, uh, any one of the other Kongs, um, which was pretty neat. You, if you got stuck at a certain part of a level, then you could switch to another Kong and do, do something different, try another tactic. And there weren't too many places that were, like, there were some that were only accessible to, uh, to like one or two of the, of the Kongs, but there weren't, there weren't that, like a lot of the levels were like, just figure out how to traverse it with your favorite, with your favorite character, which was kind of neat. Um, but they did lead you down paths. Like each, each, each Kong can only collect um, one color of banana. Like Donkey Kong can only can only collect yellow bananas, and um, or like Lanky can only connect, collect blue. Tiny can only collect purple. Chunky green. Diddy red. <clears throat> so they would lead you to places where they would want you to explore the level with that with that character using their specific bananas, um, which was kind of a nice way to do that. And since the other ones couldn't couldn't collect the other characters' bananas, you can't you won't ever leave yourself wondering where to go with that character if you haven't been that character in that in that level yet. Um, they sort of leave you breadcrumbs to go and. Uh, figure out where to where to go next but you also got to use like their skills in, in clever ways how they move and their um kind of special abilities were different in highly different ways so that you can explore the explore some extreme parts of the levels in uh ways unique to each character which was kind of neat um but by and far my favorite part about that game is I don't know if you still have to say spoilers for for games that have been out for like decades, but um, the final boss, like you you do fight a boss, um, like not right at the end. But if you do all the collectathon stuff, then you can like have a boxing match with King K. Rule uh, using all five of the Kong characters that you unlocked. So you start like with round one playing as Donkey Kong using the barrels on the on the rope shooting shooting yourself at at K rule. And every time, every time this happens, um like the ring is just being destroyed over the course of all of these rounds. But um Every time King K. Rule is about to be counted out, the Kremlins that are Kremlings that are um, like refereeing the match end up hitting the bell so that it has to go to the next round. So it's just like this really like it's just this comedic thing the whole way through. Um, and all the Kongs are like super happy every round they win. They don't really care. They're just they're just doing stuff. And you go through each of those like for Diddy Kong, you get to use your rocket barrels to go up to the rafters and shoot down lights so they fall on K Rule's head. Um, Tiny, you just shrink and go into his shoe and like make his toes very itchy or something. Uh, basically, turn red uh, in the game. Lanky, just pulling in barrels from off the off the level with really stretchy arms and throwing and putting bananas on the floor, really giant bananas. And um, that makes him trip and fall. I guess I should say for both of those rounds, the tiny one and the, the lanky one, uh, K rule has a, has one of the light fixtures stuck on his head. So he can't see during both of those rounds. It's pretty funny. He's just sort of wandering around doing whatever. And the last one, he does get it off the, the, the light fixture off his head and he's facing chunky and you just have to go through various patterns and you have to just punch him really hard chunky's thing is just he's a big a, a big guy and likes to punch things i guess i shouldn't say likes to punch things he's the fraidy he's the scaredy cat of the bunch but he's just also huge and can punch things really good uh, but yeah it was like 
thought that whole thing was really well put together. It was a really nice, like, interactive cinematic thing. Uh, you get to play as all these characters doing all their unique stuff. So you're, like, doing basically everything the game has taught you up to this point with each of those characters, using all of the skills at their disposal to do it. It was a really good way of, like, testing your skill in this seemingly high stakes thing and it was delivered in just comical donkey kong fashion it, they just did a really good job with it um but yeah i was like after that point i did get a super nintendo and played donkey kong country and as good it just wasn't as good as donkey kong 64 in in my mind the next donkey kong game i shouldn't i was gonna say the next donkey kong game that i like got and super enjoyed was um uh was donkey kong country returns but that's not true actually thinking about it uh i had gotten donkey konga and donkey kong jungle beat those were the games where if you don't recall came with bongo controllers i was, was like just getting into percussion in high school so these these controllers were like super gimmicky and they were like my kind of gimmick like i'd bring these things to our like drumline breakfasts before marching band uh competitions and like everybody in the drumline would just be playing these like stupid gimmicky uh like donkey kong bongo controllers for stuff for like a bit just playing really uh really cheesy pop tunes uh, in a Donkey Kong game, so yeah, that was that was kind of silly. I played that. That wasn't really a Donkey Kong game. That was just a Donkey Kong branded game. But Jungle Beat wasn't wasn't terrible. Like it's it felt like a pretty fun experience, albeit strange because you're having to play it with the bongo controller. You go to the go to the right, hitting the hitting the the right bongo and the left hitting the left bongo, um, and like jumping is hitting both and attacking is like clapping. So it was weird, but it was pretty good. And the game looked really nice um, being on GameCube, but it was like, it was very limited. It looked very nice. I don't know. I just kind of enjoyed it. And I can only have much else to say about that one other than the, the gimmick was kind of strange, but the game was pretty solid. Uh, but yeah, after that, then the, the next games that I played were Donkey Kong Country Returns. And oh my goodness, those are so good. Like, I don't know if it's just like how the Donkey Kong Country games were rendered that it was just hard for me to follow them. Maybe just graphically, it's it's odd. Like way ahead of their time, they look fantastic for Super Nintendo games, but it was, it was always difficult for my eyes to track them. And just getting that softer, I shouldn't say softer, like it, it's distinct. It's as a high contrast, knowing where Donkey Kong is in the level at all times, everything was so responsive. Uh, those games are just fantastic, both um, both the original Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze. Both of them did a really good job of capturing that spirit of the game and presenting it in a way that actually like was friendly to to my vision. I don't know. It was like I don't know if other people felt that about the Donkey Kong Country games. Like definitely no knock on how it looked. It was fantastic again for for that Super Nintendo era, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just something, something about my, something about how I, how I saw that game. It was, it was difficult to play for any period of time because it was hard for me to like tell where Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong were at any point in the, in the game for some reason. It's strange. Maybe it was just because like controls too. I don't know. It's weird. Um, but yeah, like DKCR. They were just those games. Just they really brought back that that feel with really super tight controls, really crisp graphics that made it easy to see everything. Just super good, super good. Donkey Kong's come a, come a long way in, in, in my mind. Um, yeah, still have a soft spot for Donkey Kong 64. Uh, probably not too many people do, but I do remember it uh, for relatively fondly. I don't know if I would anymore if I broke out the N64 and uh, tried it again. Maybe we'll maybe we'll see if that if that goes well sometime. I have a little bit of time now. I am uh, I am off work for the year. Woohoo! Technically, technically, still gotta do a little bit of stuff. So got some time for games. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll dig out the Donkey Kong 64. I'm gonna guess no. I have other stuff on the backlog I want to get through, but uh, I can I can dream I can dream a little bit. Um, yeah, called it that. Check out Donkey Kong 64 
you enjoy. If you want to like see how like a game let you change between characters, still guide you through a level by changing those characters, and how early games that did that like led you through a level without letting you feel lost. Because I, I did a really good job. Did a really good job of it. Game was huge. Probably too many collectibles. Um, but I did a decent job with what with what it had uh, back then. So pretty decent there. All right. Enough of Donkey Kong then for today. I can say goodbye to Donkey Kong. Maybe it'll... Well, it, well, yeah, there you go. Okay, now you can see him again. Woohoo. Oh, banana. Okay, I'm done. Done for real this time. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a fantastic weekend. See you on Monday. Catch you then. See ya. <laughs>